darling, a angel are rare Good evening. I suppose there's not one person in a thousand in Great Britain today who is not familiar with the face and the voice of Johnny Darling. Uncrowned king of British popular music, television idol, and one of the biggest names in show business since the war. For almost one year now, Sunday night has been indisputably Johnny Darling night. The combination of warm, cocking humor and dazzling talents, this young man in the space of a few months has made himself almost unique in the annals of British show business history. Now, as you all probably know, Johnny walked out during the recording of one of his Sunday night television shows. And by so doing, created the greatest sensation since the Marie Celeste. Well, despite the fact that Johnny had only sung two of his songs in the show, the BBC has decided to let you see the last recorded moments in the career of Johnny Darling. Leading psychiatrist, Police officials and representatives of the BBC have watched the recording that you're about to see countless times in a vain effort to find a clue, a look, a frown, a gesture, something that will give them a lead to the question that everyone is asking today, where is Johnny Darling? Oh, 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 what do you think you're doing? Who are you? Let's just say I'm a close friend. What do you want? Look at him. Herbert Nevish, son of a Kennington bookmaker known to the world as Johnny Darling. How old are you, Johnny? About 20 or 30. And there you stand, Herbert. A monument to British popular music. Don't call me Herbert. <laughs> but you are a Herbert, a proper Herbert. <laughs> have you ever listened to your voice? Well, I have to, you know. It sounds like interference on a cheap Japanese pocket radio. <laughs> well, I've been trying to develop an individual sound man, you know. How long do you think this is going to last? Now, look, don't kid yourself, Herbert. One magic morning, you'll wake up and find the great British public have got themselves a new Johnny Darling, and you'll be... Just another Herbert Nevish. And then it'll be goodbye, La Dolce Vita, and hello, Labour Exchange. <laughs> and what will be your epitaph? Here lies Herbert Nevish, teenage idol, created 1961, destroyed 1962. Are you the fellow from This Is Your Life? <laughs> Have you ever thought of the influence you've got over the thousands of little darlings who buy your records? Yeah. Well, either you got it or you ain't. <laughs> That's not what I mean. You're in a position to set them a good example. I'm a singer, not a preacher. Do you ever read the papers, Herbert? No, my agent reads the papers. I, just, I only sign them. <laughs> Do you have any idea at all what's going on in the world? Of course I have. I'm not an idiot. I mean, Elvis has just agreed to lend the American government some more money. Um, Ellen Shapiro says she's going to retire soon and let a younger woman take her place. Uh, Adam Faith says he's seriously thinking of having his hair cut. Um, oh, yeah, Billy Fury is suing his tailor because his gold army trousers went rusty. Um, Do you know that a mass meeting of Indian astrologers have decided that the world is going to end in February? Oh, yeah, Lionel Bart and Alba, Alma Cogan said they're just good. February? <laughs> But I'm making an LP in February. They have decided unanimously that the stars predict a world catastrophe sometime during February. You mean the end of the world? That's what they say. How do you know all this? We read it in the papers, remember? But you were too busy looking to see if there was something about you. But why aren't people doing anything about it? Why aren't you doing anything about it? What can I do about it? I'm a singer, not a politician. 
But if you really feel strongly about it, you can go and sit in Trafalgar Square. No, you go and sit in Trafalgar Square. <laughs> You're joking, I'll get mobbed. Isn't there anything else I can do? The truth of the matter is, Herbert, you're a singer without a voice, in a career without a future, in a world without a hope. There isn't much time, Kurt. There isn't much time. There isn't much light. time. There Give isn't me some light. much time. Light. It's Madison time. Right, two up, two down, and the wire up. It's it. Right, two up, two down, and an Elvis Presley. It's it. Hmm. Right, two up, two down, and a Johnny Darling. It's it. I'm going out of my mind. Johnny Darling, why are you wearing your fan bracelet? Gone off him, didn't like his last record. Somewhere made in cane ankle chain instead. You still got your Tommy Steel compact? Who? Oh, no, I got rid of that when I threw a new Marty Ward eternity ring. Do you think Connie Francis, Francis will ever find true happiness? Dunno. Do you think Cliff and the Shadows will ever break up? I think I'd die for dear. Dunno. Do you think Norman Donegan's old man really is a dustman? <laughs> Do you read the papers? They say the world's gonna end in February. Right, two up, two down, the world's gonna end in February. It's here. <laughs> the world's gonna end. Don't you think it's all for the way the Abbey Brothers copy the Andersons? Well, they're all doing it now. Look at the way Frank Sinatra copies Matt Munro. <laughs> I don't believe it. I've just told you the world's gonna end in February and all you two can talk about is idiot singers. Right, two up, two down and an Anthony Newley. It's it. <laughs> Goes the weasel. <laughs> right, two up, two down and Johnny Darling, right? Hit it. Do you think Johnny Darling will ever find true happiness? Not if he goes on copying Connie Francis. <laughs> Why, do you think people are getting tired of him? He didn't like his last record. Saying just like Bing Crosby copying Michael Oddity. How long do you think he's got? Oh, I don't know. She's back in February, I suppose. Right, two up, two down, and a Jess Conrad. Hit it. Light!